Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now this is a new week and I pray that the favor of God rests upon your life this week. I pray that the Lord will open up his good treasure over your life. Let the heavens be open over you and let wisdom, ideas, nourishment from the Lord visit you this week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that whatever you desire from the Lord this week is coming to you freely. Praise God. Because that's how God does. He gives us freely all things to enjoy. So receive that which is yours this week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, as the word of the Lord comes to you this week, you will find things to benefit, things to profit from it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus jesus christ amen praise god now turn your bibles with me to the study we've been on for the past three weeks i think this is the fourth week and that's in first corinthians now today we are starting chapter four i told you we will be on this until the lord says go do something else praise god but but i i'm, I'm trying to see how we can do more chapters in a week it's just been one chapter per week but let's see how the lord's going to help us this week and like i said we'll read the scriptures and then we'll see the word of the lord that will come out from it so this is not a, a an ex explanation of every verse no we we are setting the atmosphere by looking into the scriptures and then trust that the word of the lord will come to us praise god so when first corinthians chapter four thank you lord jesus now 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 before we go into this there's uh, something the lord said i should share with you today now at the on the first of the month we we usually have um, fasting and prayer meeting for the whole day you know we have a 24 hours fast and, and and on the first of this month the lord gave us an instruction to study the book of proverbs this month so now I just want to bring that to your attention. Take the book of Proverbs and begin to study. There are lots of things. Now when the Lord gives an instruction, it means there is something in there that he has kept for you. you know? So while I was preparing for, for this broadcast, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, share the study with your audience. Praise God. So, so get into the book of Proverbs. Start from chapter 1. Take it as much as you can handle you know, per day and see how you finish it by, by the month's end praise god all right then first corinthians chapter 4 now it says verse 1 now i'm reading from the um, old king james that that's my bible is old king james but then i have several other translations who may refer to this is let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ and stewards of the mystery of God. What's he saying? This is how people should look at us. Praise God. The people should look at us as what? As ministers of Christ and the steward of the mysteries of God. Now, you've heard several people say, um, sometimes you people should know that pastors are also human beings. You know, know that your pastor is a human being. It may seem so, but you see, Paul is saying something different. He says, the way people should see us. Now, I want you to follow closely. So the way people should see us, they should see us as ministers of Christ. See, ministers of Christ. Now, who's the us here? He's not just talking about pastors. He's talking about, remember this letter is not just to pastors. This letter is to every brother, every sister in Corinth. Praise God. And then by extension to every one of us. I told you that from chapter 1. Now he says, so everyone should look at us, how? As ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. You know what it means to be steward, custodian of the mystery of God. Now that is big. If God can trust you to be a custodian of his ministry, of his mysteries, then it means that there is a place you have aimed with God. See, because God doesn't just release his mysteries anyhow. Jesus himself said, you don't give that which is important to swines. You don't do that. So if, if, if Jesus said don't do that, then he tells us that God will not do such a thing. See, so 
When you carry the mystery of God, it's not just because you have a title on you as pastor. No, 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 no. It means you must have assessed something with God. Now, there's a lot I can tell you about that. It means you, you, must have, you must have gotten something in God. You must have found your way in God's heart. Praise God. Because he doesn't just release mysteries in here. Now, I'm not just talking about someone who, who, who's preaching what someone else has preached. I'm talking about someone who receives the mystery. And you can know that. You see, the one who receives it will leave it. See? But the one who copies it may not leave it. He will just do the talking. Oh, yeah. Praise God. So, so, so you look for people who are not just talking it, but people who are living it. And you will know from the manner of life they live. Praise God. Now it says, moreover, it is required in stewards. See, this is something particularly with stewards. Now it says, let people see us as stewards. It is required in steward that a man be found faithful. If you're a steward of Christ, first thing God must have recognized in you to make you a steward is that you be faithful. Now, God chooses those who are his stewards. Not, this is not man's ordination we are talking about. A man can come and say, oh, uh, we need 10 more pastors. So, okay, you, 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 uh, go to pastoral school. And then after the pastoral school, you make, you make him a pastor. Now, that's how we've gotten lots of people who don't even know God, see. We've gotten them into pastoring. And they are causing lots and lots of havoc in the body of Christ. But you see, it's nothing to be scared of. Nobody, I, I, and I want you to get this, nobody can do any kind of damage to the Lord's body. No one. No one is qualified to do that. No one is powerful enough to do that. Nobody. Now I'll show you something as we go on. So it says, if you, if you consider yourself a steward of God, then faithfulness must be seen in your life. See, it's required. It's a requirement. It's not just, some, oh, Father, help me to be faithful. If you, if you are praying, God, help me to be faithful, yeah, you don't qualify to be a steward of the mysteries of God. See, those who are, are stewards of the mystery of God have found themselves faithful. See, because the Lord will find them faithful first. Now, does it mean, oh, you, you come on, I know I'm faithful. No. Anyway, let's just go on. He, he explains it. But with me, verse 3 now, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. What's he saying? Now, he says, a, a, a steward must be faithful. But then he says, with me, it's a very small thing that I should judge that I should be judged of you concerning being faithful. In other words, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I, don't, I don't strive. I don't struggle for it. See? Why? Hmm. For I know, chapter 4, um, sorry, verse 4. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. What's he saying here? <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes you read scriptures and you're like, I don't get what, what is what's he saying fine he says we must be faithful as stewards of the mysteries of christ and then he goes on to say look with me it's a small thing that i should be judged of you no no i i don't i don't um i don't overvalue myself to be afraid you know thinking that oh um, can, can will these people see that i'm faithful or not he said that's nothing with me praise god and you'll see the reason he said that he says he says, neither do I judge my own self. So I don't sit down, am I faithful? Am I not faithful? I hope. Uh. He says, for I know nothing by myself. Now, this is powerful. Watch. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Now, what does he say? Is it I'm careless? Nobody should judge me? I don't even judge myself? No. Paul is saying here that, hey, everything I do, I don't do it because I, co I conceptualize it. No, I do it because I received command from the Lord. So I don't even know what I'm going to do next. Praise God. That's what he's saying. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know what judgment I'm going to give. Why? Because, you know, like Jesus said, the judgment that I give, it's not, it's not my own judgment. But as I hear, so I judge. 
Now that's part of being faithful unto the one who's called you to be a steward. Praise God. So, so you show that faithfulness to follow everything that he tells you to do. So it's not even in your place to say, I, I know I'm right. No, the best thing you can say, I know I obeyed the Lord where that thing is concerned. And he is my judge. See? Now it doesn't mean you do something wrong. Say, well, we know God is the judge. Now there's a, there's a binding factor. Watch this. Okay, watch. It says, but he that judged me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. See? Until the Lord comes. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Praise God. You, you don't judge. That's what Paul Don't judge anything before the time. Now, when is the time? When Jesus, who has called us, comes. Praise God. Because he's the one that is going to say, you did right according to the assignment that I gave to you. You didn't do right according to the assignment that I gave to you. No man can take this judgment on himself. Oh, oh, that's true. That's why I told you in chapter 2. He says the spiritual man, nobody can judge him. Why? Because, see, he responds. The spiritual man actually responds only to the Holy Spirit. So his, his thoughts, his judgments are all um, a function of the voice of God that he hears. Now that's who, that's who a minister ought to be. That's who a minister is. He is a faithful steward of the mysteries. Now when he says mystery, why did he call it mystery? Mystery doesn't mean, the, you know, when you say, oh, uh, custodian of the mysteries of God, you say, the seven stars, you know, you start going into all those things. Man, this man can share mysteries. Oh, oh mysteries. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Mysteries. I'll tell you what mysteries are. Mysteries are just the complicated ways or manifold wisdom of God. Now, why is it complicated? It's a complicated. It means it's no. It, it means you see. You don't just say this is how it is. I'll give you an example. Moses one time in the book of I think that's in the book of Exodus or in the book of Numbers. Not so sure now, but but, but Moses' story just came to my heart. Moses one time had an issue, you know, some, some daughters of a man who had just passed away came to him and said, Moses, we don't get, our father doesn't have a son, so is it right that we inherit our father's property? Now, the tradition didn't give that opportunity for daughters to inherit their father's property. See? Now, Moses would have gone with the tradition and said, oh, no, 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 your uncle should, should um, administer the property of your father. But Moses was smart enough to say, oh, no, hold on. Let me go before the Lord and find out what he thinks. Then Moses went before the Lord and the Lord said, yes, Moses, the, the ladies are right. Let them handle their father's property. Now, that was new. And that seems strange to their tradition. But that was the word of the Lord. See, Now, if Moses was going to judge, now that's what it means to be a custodian of the mystery of God. It actually means to be a custodian of the voice of God. So people know you as one who hears the voice of God before you take any stand or before you take any action. And that's what it simply means. So when you say, I'm a custodian of the mystery of God, it means I'm one who seeks the mind of God because the mind of God is his mystery. Praise God. So, so it's not because someone talks, always talks about, you know, things that are out of this world. And you say, this man carries mystery. No, sir. No. One who carries mystery is one who carries the voice of God in his heart. Now, what does that tell you? That means you never tell what he's going to say concerning a specific matter. Praise God. Whoa. You know, we've got to stop here today. But thank God we got up to verse 5. Praise God. So, we're going to stop here and we're going to continue tomorrow. I pray for you today that the Spirit of God will cause you to see that which you are looking for today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.